Hi there. Thank you for joining me in our study here today. My name is Stuart Gould and it is such a pleasure to bring this study to you. Today we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and we are going to start in verse 1 and we are going to go down to the end of verse 6. It is such a blessing to be here to share this with you and Paul is just talking to us about how God has given us some people responsibility to share the things of God. And that happens as we become a servant. We become a servant of Christ entrusted with the secrets of God to share with those who are in our uh, sphere of influence so that we can bring them to a point of maturity that they can walk with the Lord. And that we are not to be focusing on that person but on the Lord. Remember Paul is dealing with all the way through here an issue where there was an argument in the church in Corinth where one said, well, I follow Paul or I follow Paulus or Cephas or whoever, right? Because he's trying to tell them this isn't what's important. These people are servants of God bringing the word of God to you. And their conscience needs to be clear. They not, need not to worry about what you say or about what somebody else says about them, but that their conscience is clear before God as they share his word. And we're going to talk a little bit today about our responsibility in that and how that makes a difference in our life. Once again, thank you for joining me in our study in the book of Corinthians. Today we are in chapter 4, starting at verse 1. And then Paul continues here from where our last study was, where he was talking about not being wrapped up in the wisdom of this world, but being becoming foolish in the things of this world so that we can become wise in the things of God. So let's just continue here in our study in verse 1. So then men ought to regard us as servants of Christ to those entrusted with the secret things of God. Now it is required that those who have been given a trust be proven faithful. I care little if I'm judged by you or by a human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself. My conscience is clear, but that does not make me innocent. It is the Lord who judges me. Paul is giving us a, quite a statement here, and it's very important for us to understand. He said, men ought to regard us as servants of Jesus. Those who minister to us, those who help us, those who are fathers to us, those who teach us and help us to walk in the things of the Lord, we need to regard as servants of Christ. And speaking to those of us who are involved in those things, remember that in the church, it's not like the business world where you move up and you have a certain hierarchy that people have and you're, you're trying to gain a higher title or whatever the situation is. When we're working in the church and the Lord entrusts things to us, he's entrusting them to us that we might become a servant of the people. And that's so important for us to understand that it is servant leadership that God is interested in. Paul says here that men ought to regard us as servants of Christ. That's how we should be looked at. This is how we should be seen. We shouldn't be seen as someone who gets lifted up, someone who um, people need to worship, someone who people need to follow. I mean, in this book Paul wrote earlier, you know, some say I'm of Paul, some of Cephas, some of Paul. Why are you saying these things? This isn't what we're about. We're here to serve the Lord. We're here to serve you by bringing you to the Lord, not for you to elevate us. There's a twofold thing that's happening here. Number one, those of us who have been given the gifting to help the church, to teach the church, to uh, lead in different ways, we must not look at that as an opportunity to elevate ourselves. It's not about elevating ourselves. It's not about us becoming something or it's nothing wrong to aspire to want to serve more, but it is wrong if we're aspiring to, to climb a ladder of success and try to lord it over people. 
the twofold thing here is number one, we need to have an attitude of a servant. But number two is the people that we're serving must not recognize us or think that we are somebody special, but that they would recognize that we are just mere servants as well. Now, it's important, he says here, so then men ought to regard us as servants of Christ and as those who have been entrusted with the secret things of God. The people who've done the study and the people who've gotten revelation from God who get up and share and talk about, we need to honor the message that they're bringing without getting over the top in honoring them. We need to recognize that God has given them a message to share with us and that they are just like any of the rest of us, right? We're not special because God has given us insight and God's given us an ability to share the word of God. It is important for us to understand that we are servants, but also it's important to the people that we are working with, the people that we are teaching or whatever, that they understand that we are servants. And then we have a healthy relationship, right? Now it is required that those who have been trusted be proven faithful. When God has trusted us with the word of God, we need to be proven faithful. We need to prove that we are willing to take what we have received and share it with God's people. One of the reasons why I'm making these videos, it was a good friend of mine and my wife, they encouraged me. They said, the Lord has given you so many things. Why don't you do some video? Why don't you do something? Why don't you write a book? Or why don't you do, you need to do something to get the word out more. And so this is one of the reasons we started these videos because as the Lord has shared things with me, I'm able to share with you, and we're all blessed by it. Amen? I'm nothing special. I'm an ordinary person like anybody else. The Lord has, for whatever reason, given me ability to look at the Word of God and to get revelation from it and to be able to share it with many people. I count it as a great joy, but I also have to be faithful to the calling that God has called me to, right? Each one of us need to be faithful to what God has called us to. Amen? I care very little if I'm judged by you or any human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself. This is a huge thing in the world today because, you know, so many people are so self-conscious. And that, I guess, in one sense, easy to understand because this is what we're bombarded with in the world. The world bombards us from the time we're very little and all the way up through the education system. The world teaches us that we need to worry about ourselves. It's all about self. We have to worry about ourselves. And, you know, they've come to a point now where they, they don't let you discipline your children. You don't, you know, children nowadays, they just run wild and they just, it is unbelievable some of the things that, that kids do because they're not disciplined. We're not doing a favor for our child. We think we're walking in an enlightened time. Now, I know that in the past there may have been some child abuse by people, and that's not right either. But because there's a wrong on one sense doesn't mean to say that you can make go the opposite way and that it's going to be any more right. Because there's, there is a point in the middle where we need discipline and instruction. We need to know what is right and what is wrong. And we need to be able to teach people that, right? Paul is saying here that as he receives things from the Lord, he's not worried about it. He says, I, I care little if I'm judged by you or by a human court. Indeed, I don't even judge myself. In, in other words, what he's saying, I really don't care what you think about me. I don't really, really care what the, the court say. I know who I am in God, and I know the giftings and the calling he has given me, and I will walk in those giftings and calling to the best of my ability. And Paul is one who lived this out, right? Paul lived these things out. How many times was Paul flogged? How many times was he stoned? How many times was he in jail? How many times did all these things happen to him, yet he never wavered? He was faithful in the calling that God had called him to. And we need that kind of faith in the church today. We need that kind of servitude in the church. We need that kind of commitment of walking in the things of the Lord. My conscience is clear, but that does not make me innocent. It is the Lord who judges me. And that's who we want to judge us. Because we know when the Lord judges us, he judges us with a heart of love. 
I know the picture we often have is that God judges us and he's going to just kill us. Now, when we look at the Old Covenant, that's easy to understand where people got that misconception from. Like, for instance, one of my things of the law that I often talk about, and remember that under the Old Covenant, there were not 10 laws. There were 613 laws. There was 10 written on a stone, a tablet, but there were 613 laws. And one of those laws that is that if a child is rebellious, the parents are to instruct them. If that doesn't work, they're, they're to take them to the city elders and instruct them. If that doesn't work, they're to take the child out and stone them. Well, how can this be a loving God? How can this be a loving God who tells us to take a child and take him out and stone him to death? You know, we get confused on that. But what we need to understand, at that point in time, there wasn't a way for them to do exorcism. There wasn't a way for them to pray for a person and to cast out that demon because the, Satan had all the power. He had the authority and the power because we had given it to him in the Garden of Eden. It wasn't until Jesus came that took his power and authority away from him that we have the power and authority now that we can speak to a, a demon or uh, someone possessed or being influenced by a demonic realm that we can pray over them, we can pray, uh, speak to them and we can get them delivered. So now under the new covenant, if a child is rebellious, we pray for him. We work with them, right? We don't go out and stone them to death. But under the old covenant, they did. But it wasn't because God was an unloving God. It was because he was a loving God, because he, he knew if that child continued with that demonic possession in him, with that rebellion working through him, that it would spread through the whole camp, that it would spread all the way around. And he knew it had to be isolated and taken out. From the surface, you and I looking at it, thinking, oh, God is just condemning this child by saying that the child should be stoned to death. Man, he can't be a loving God. How is this a loving God? Well, it is because you have to understand that he's looking at the whole picture, not just this one small part. And he can see that this one child with a spirit of rebellion, if it's not dealt with, it's going to spread through the whole camp and it's going to destroy not one person, but many, many people. So it's important for us to understand that. Amen. Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait till the Lord comes. He will bring light to what is hidden in the darkness and will expose the motives of men's heart. At that time, each will receive his praise from God. I think one of the best ways to understand this scripture is to remember the story that Jesus told his disciples. He said, you know, a fisherman goes out and catches fish and he brings a fish in and he sorts a fish. And he said that in this world, you know, you're, gonna, you're going to sow a field and there's going to be good seed and bad seed. But just leave it. Don't go out and try to take the bad seed out. If you try to weed the bad crop that's mixed in with the good crop, if you try to take it out, you're going to destroy the good with it. So just leave it to the end, and then when harvest time comes, then you can sort out the bad stuff and you can sort the good stuff. This is very powerful scripture here that he's talking about, and this is what he's saying here. Therefore judge nothing before it's appointed time. Wait till the Lord comes. He will bring light to what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of men's heart. At that time, each will receive his praise from God. God will separate the sheep and the goats. You know, there's sheep congregation, goat congregation. There's sheep people, there's goat people. There's people who are dedicated to the Lord and the people who aren't. And he said he's going to separate these things at the end times, right? It's not for us to do that. And oftentimes we get involved in that. That's so easy to do, to get involved in separating people, get involved in condemning people. But what God calls us to do, each one of us, what is his command? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind and to love your neighbor as yourself. What does that mean? It's a very simple statement to say, love your neighbor as yourself, but the execution of that statement is not a simple thing. It's not a simple thing because people do bad things to us. People say harmful things to us. People do things that are not nice to us, and yet what does God say? That we should love them as ourselves. We need the help of God for that. We, we cannot love people as ourselves if we are judging them 
for what they are doing. And so that's why it's important for us to understand what God is calling for us, right? That we just wait because God has a time. He has a way to deal with people. He can deal with people much better than we can. We think sometimes that we need to fix people or we need to help somebody change their way. Really what we need to do is be praying for them because that's going to be more effective than anything else we can do because God knows their heart and he knows how to touch them. Now, brothers, I have applied these things to myself and Apollos for your benefit so that you may learn from us the meaning of the saying, do not go beyond what is written. Then you will not take pride in one man over against another. Now, Paul, remember, he's writing with this theme where the people were having problems focusing on one person more than another. I'm of Apollo. I'm of Apollos. I'm of Cephas. He's trying to deal with the situation. He says, now I applied these things to myself and Apollos for your benefit so that you will learn from us the meaning of the saying, do not go beyond what is written, that you will not take pride in one man against another. You know, don't think that you're following this one. These are just people that are servants. This is what he's talking about all the way through here. These are people that are servants that are serving us, that are giving us the things of God. Don't go beyond what the word is. Listen to the word that they have. One thing that I've often adopted when I'm listening to somebody, especially if it's somebody new, but anybody really, uh, I listen to what they say and I think, okay, what part is God and what part is man here? What part are they speaking, which is a message that God has for us, and what part did they go beyond that? Because all of us who are involved in teaching and who are involved in sharing God's word will make that mistake. We will cross a line from where it is God speaking to where it's our own understanding. Now, of course, it's not what we desire to do. We desire to do the will of God. But, you know, it, it's not a perfect science. It's something that takes time and practice to do. What we need to understand, oftentimes what will happen, somebody will say something wrong or they will quote a verse and they'll be out one verse on the on the address or something and people will say, well, look, that guy's not a Christian. I'm not going to have anything to do with him. Well, you've thrown away a whole bunch of information that God has given to you through this man because he's made one little mistake. We're all human beings and we're all going to make mistakes. There's no human being that does not make mistakes. And that's all of us. We all make mistakes. And so we need to have this grace for one another, right? Amen. I think we're going to stop there for today. We're just at the end of our time here. And I think we can take a blessing from this message today. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for what we have learned here today. Father, we need to just understand that each one of us is a servant, that we are serving the things of God. Help us to be wise in how we deal with these things. And Father, not concerned with all the words and all the thinking and all the things that come out of us, but just to be have our conscience clear and just to speak the things of God. And we just thank you for that, Lord. We thank you that you have given us opportunity to share your word. We thank you for this medium that we have that we can share the word and the things that you have revealed to us. Father, we just pray a blessing on each one that's listening, Lord, that they you may touch their hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember, God always loves you. He always loves you. And he always wants the best for you. Amen. He loves you and so do I. Take us home, girls.